Does it actually matter how many conductors we put in a single hole when we're drilling out for a residential job? So there's a lot of arguments out there with people that are like, oh, you can only put two of these pieces of Romex through a hole. Well, what if the hole's an inch and a quarter? Well, I don't know, maybe like four? Yeah, like see, it kind of falls apart. So there are places where your local jurisdictions are, are going to dictate. Sure, there's some places around here where inspectors don't want to see more than two. They don't want to see more than three. Doesn't matter if it's 12-3 and 12-2 or two 12-3s and a 12-2 or anything like that. But there's not actually anything in code, in the National Electrical Code, that says that there's a certain amount of these pieces of Romex that you can put inside of the hole. Largely because we can have different size holes. What does matter is something called bundling. So once you start bundling a whole bunch of these, like say we had 40 of these that were all bundled together and we like zip tied them all like every foot so that it was this tight bundle of wire. Code does talk about bundling conductors and you don't want to bundle conductors for two reasons really. One of them makes more sense than the other. I think one of them is just an additive thing to a conversation that people like to throw in. That one is that there needs to be heat, there needs to be free air around these conductors so that they can dissipate heat. And when you have a huge volume of conductors that all have current running through them, there's a certain amount of heat on each conductor. Uh, but my argument there is there's never really enough heat because there's never really enough current flowing through most conductors. In a house, if you had 40, you know, 12 twos all run next to each other and grouped together, the likelihood of any of them having more than a few amps on them at any given time is gonna be pretty low. Most of the time throughout a house, most of the plug circuits aren't being uh, used. Most of the lights are not on in the house at the same time, except for maybe during certain portions of the day. You might have a computer plugged in here or there. You might be vacuuming something, but the, the majority of the time, that bundling has nothing to do with the heat because there's nowhere near enough current going through these conductors to really worry about heat dissipation. And there's even less likelihood that all 40 of those conductors are gonna be running at max value enough to where you need to have all this air cooling them down. So I will argue that all day long with anybody that, uh, that thinks that bundling is about heat dissipation. It is more about capacitive coupling. So, so there's a thing that, uh, that happens between conductors. If you have a whole bunch of conductors run next to each other, um, each between these, anytime that you have a voltage uh, between two things and you have an air gap, you can build up capacitance. You can have charges on one side and opposite charges on the other side. And that happens a lot. And even like uh, utility lines have to be designed for capacitance in mind. So you can have a certain amount of capacitance between two conductors and the more that you separate them, the more you reduce the effects of that capacitance. So capacitance can actually impede current flow on conductors. So if you got 40 conductors and all of them are running current on each other, the effects of capacitance between every single one of those conductors is a lot higher. This is why we derate uh, in code in 310.15, we have these things called uh, derating tables. And so we go through and do correction factors based off how many current carrying conductors we have in a piece of conduit. But if we're running Romex, we don't have the conduit, but it's still the same thing. We still have the capacitive effect that's possible. This is the real reason why they put shielding around shielded twisted pair, you know, cat five, cat six, or uh, a lot of like AV uh, conductors and things like that. They put shielding so it gets rid of any of that electromagnetic uh, leakage, I suppose you could say, or capacitance that happens, um, or even inductance that could happen in some kind of way through reactance between multiple different conductors, or sometimes they'll call it noise. Sometimes they'll do it because there's uh, electromagnetic radiation, which is a different thing than capacitance. Sometimes you can have radiation coming from something and that can, uh, that, that can affect a circuit, so putting shielding around it can, uh, can protect against that as well. All of that to say, no, it doesn't matter how many you stick in a hole. Now, I would say that as you're pulling over the length of an entire room, the more jam-packed you make a hole, the more you're gonna be damaging this outer layer of insulation, which likens the ability that you're gonna damage the, the insulation of the individual conductors on the inside of this. So it's our job to always protect the conductors that we put in, and as a good electrician, you should be putting in complete installs that are damage-free. So some people will like rip a whole bunch of the insulation, they'll just like tape it up or whatever. 
if you can get away with that, you can get away with it. But it is my personal opinion that that is shoddy work. I think everybody needs to be doing work with the foresight of what they're doing enough to not damage the conductors in the first place. Taking your time, drilling holes a little bit bigger, not overfilling them. That has more to do with the hole size and how many conductors you can put in it. And that's usually what an inspector is talking about when they're saying, hey, stop putting three or four of these in there. Because the likelihood that you're gonna damage them or, or you know, things like that, or, or the effects of bundling could be the reason, I suppose. But in any event, it is good design. And generally, if I'm using like a, a three quarter paddle bit or like a three quarter uh, whole hog bit, I usually try to stick to just two conductors per hole. Sometimes I'll throw three. I think I'm gonna actually done that in here somewhere. But it's kind of up to you. Just use your head, but just don't damage the conductors and try not to bundle any of your conductors. Try not to put huge groups of these conductors together. And there are parts of code that deal with how to deal with that if you do have to do that. Now, before you leave, if you are interested in learning more about conductors in general, I did a video down here. You should check this out. This is all about uh, different like THHN, TWN, XHHW. What do all these different insulation types mean? And if you're wondering about conduit fill, if you want to know how many conductors you can actually stick in conduit and how the, uh, the calculations on all of that work and the tables in code, this is another great video. Thank you so much for your attention. I love you crazy people and I'll see you in the next one.